The rules in board games are generally pretty hard to understand, or at least for me. Uh, a lot of times we have to watch videos, we have to read the rule book multiple times. Sometimes you have friends teach you the game because you don't really understand it. And Marvel Champions is no exception. Uh, one of the big things we do on this channel, one of the big things that comes up from my videos and other places is people just asking rules questions. And I get it. And the reason that it exists, I think, or at least the questions for it, is because the rules continue to grow for Marvel Champions. Also, they can be a little bad at times. Uh, we're going to get into that in one second. But I want to talk a little bit about bad official ruling, but just understanding why I think there's bad official ruling as well. We're about to do our first Reddit reply post that talks about bad official rulings. And I know people get kind of like upset about this and whatever because they want to defend the game or whatever else. But honestly, there's some there's some weird rules. I, I, I think we can at least agree there's weird rules out there. And I want to show this off. This is the very first rules reference uh, document that came out with. This is 1.0. And it's 24 pages and fairly straightforward. The most recent iteration is 1.5 and is 56 pages long. Now, to be fair, at the very end is a bunch of errata stuff, um, which I guess, you know, adds it to, okay, page 47 is what it should really be. So it's nine pages of errata on it and FAQ stuff. Um, but still, it's it's much longer. It's more than double in a few short years. Uh, and I think this, this kind of stems... Or this is a part of the reason why there are so many rules discussions and rules errors nowadays, because it kind of depends on what you have. I don't know what the new printings of the game hold, but even if you got a slightly older printing, I'm willing to bet that your rules reference sheet is probably 1.0, or even if it's 1.4, it's kind of outdated in a lot of it. And you need to know this rules reference. You need to know all the new stuff in it and a bunch of the nuanced stuff. That brings us to our first Reddit reply uh, topic that talks about bad official rulings. And the person states that I love this game. There's no denying that the wording in some of the cards is left ambiguous at best. I've been reading some of the uh, rulings of Hall of Heroes and I find them all to be baffling. I ignore them while playing. I actually think that this is the best idea uh, to have. There's a lot of people like me who, who used to at least. I don't do as much as I used to. But generally speaking, I'll pop in now and again and read the rulings on Hall of Heroes. Now, look, the... Alex, who I believe still does it, I'm not 100% sure, but Alex has a tough job. I'm not here to bash them or anything like that. I'm not here to bash anyone at Fancy Flight Games. But ever since the debacle that is the deal or the take and deal ruling, um, I'm kind of done with Hall of Heroes and the rulings. I, I think right now 1.5 is actually the best rule set we could hope for. And I'm basing everything off of that rule set and in my best interpretation of it. That's kind of how I'm looking at things moving forward. For those that don't know the deal and take thing, we'll go into it in one second. I'm not going to go into detail because I want to rehash it, uh, but we'll finish this person's uh, uh, thing. But the best example I have is with Wolverine, uh, specifically two encounters with his event, Slice and Dice. When Wolverine uses cause to play an event, according to the rules, only the first attack of the event gains piercing. And this is true. Uh, because Slice and Dice, and we can bring this up too, which we should uh, have done beforehand, and that's not the right website, uh, but I was I was running a little late. So so Slice and Dice, for those that don't know, uh, has, a, or has a statement that says, make the following two attacks in order, right? So you, you do deal three damage, deal three damage. So that's why. You would deal the one damage, and there's a separate instance of another damage. Uh, to give another example of this is uh, Dance of Death. Right with uh, uh, what's her name, uh, Black Widow. Same exact thing, right? She makes three attacks in an order. Same exact thing. Only the first one would gain piercing or an attack boost, right? So uh, blah, 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 here we go. Not only does it not make sense thematically, if Wolverine's taking his claws out, slicing and putting him back in, dicing afterwards, there's really no reason in terms of balance not give the second attack piercing. He's not suddenly breaking the game by having piercing on his second attack. The other iteration of this, it was directed force while playing uh, Slice and Dice. Only the first attack uh, would be affected. I would understand if using a zero cost event to do an additional four damage could be uh, too possible. And I have to look up directed force. I don't even remember that card. Directed force. Um, so when your hero makes an attack that has a keyword, oh, that's right. That attack gains two additional damage, right? So if it's overkill, piercing, or range on it, it deals uh, two additional damage. But you essentially get uh, the others as one by one or melee. So for this that they're pointing out with one by one or melee, let's bring up melee because this is a good example. Melee in the way that it works, even though it lists out two attacks, it's one instance of an attack. Even though it's targeting two different enemies, 
it's one instance of an attack. And the reason that this is important is for cards like Warrior Skill. Warrior Skill is the big one that gets a lot of questions. Uh, when your hero attacks, remove one counter from here. That attack deals one damage. And a lot of people wonder with this, with um, Royal Flush, for example, with, with Gambit. Well, what happens with this card, right? Let's just say you don't use any charge counters, right? Just to, just to make our lives easier. So it's a true 0, zero, zero uh, card. What would happen... If you use warrior skill, is it a one zero zero card? Is it a one one? Well, it's a one 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 card if you used warrior skill. Okay. Now, to make matters more confusing, if you use warrior skill on slice and dice, you would deal four damage and then deal three three damage, right? If you use warrior skill. Now, to make it even more confusing, you could because warrior skill doesn't exhaust; it just states to remove a counter, which is the cost on the card that attack deals one additional damage. So you could, with slice and dice, remove a warrior skill, deal four damage to an enemy, and then for the second one, remove a second counter off of it to also deal four damage to an enemy. You see how this can get kind of confusing with these iterations. And now when I explain it and you kind of look at it, you're like, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense. I kind of get it. But to a new player that's trying to figure out this game, trying to figure out the rule set. This is, this is kind of nuanced, and this is a part of the problem with Marvel Champions, I think, with the rules, is that, yes, it does make sense in the grander scheme of things, but someone that's, like, trying to get into the game and trying to figure out, this is tough stuff. It honestly is. It's honestly tough to figure this out. If I gave a new player the rule book and asked them, if I played Warrior Skill, you know, would it affect both these things? Or would it affect all three of these things? They would probably say the same answer for both those things, not two different answers, right? That, that, that doesn't feel natural uh, in my opinion at least um, so i get this person uh, stating this and i get i get why why they feel this way one of my biggest issues was always deal and take it's a rule that they made up again i'm not going to get into it too much but long very long story short there was a debacle ish they, they resolved it very fairly quickly i'm not going to make it seem like there was this long drawn out thing but there was a small debacle with deal and take that had to do with steel fist um or steel punch Steel fist, steel punch, steel fist, steel fist. Uh, deal five damage to an enemy. You may discard a tough status from your hero. Uh, arrow costs stun and confuse the enemy. And the reason why this was a debacle is because everything before the arrow is a cost and must be paid. So if the enemy only has four life, well, you didn't deal five damage. So can you actually do this whole thing? And this was a weird ruling. And they ruled like kind of weirdly on it for a little bit because I, I don't think Alex was 100% sure what they wanted to do here. And long story short, they made up a brand new rule of deal and take. Now, the irony of it is they use this deal and take rule, which for those that don't know, you can deal up to the amount of damage, but you must take all the damage. So if you can only deal four damage, that's okay. But if the card would have said, you know, take two damage uh, and then discard this card to stun a confused enemy, you have to take two, right? Take you must do, deal you could do up to the amount. Hopefully that makes sense. The, the irony of all of this is with this whole deal and take ruling and all the stuff they did with it, they end up eroding this card anyway. And I'm, I don't think many people even know that, that this card is not what this is anymore. You replace the arrow with the word two so that the cost doesn't happen anymore because of another ruling what they've done where with the cost arrow, if you cannot do the thing after the, yeah, if you can't do the thing after the arrow, you can't do anything before the arrow, right? And this was whole, uh, this was because of She-Hulk, which I have to look up because I don't remember what it is. I think it's superhuman strength if I remember correctly. Uh, but the issue with She-Hulk, for those that don't know, is that with sh superhuman strength, if you are playing uh, against like Thanos, who's a stalwart villain, and you cannot stun the attacked enemy, right? You attack them, you can't stun them. Well, you can't do the beginning of this, which is after She-Hulk attacks, discards superhuman strength, right? It's it's this weird glitch in the rules that basically superhuman strength, She-Hulk gets plus two the entire game if you're playing a stalwart enemy. It, it's kind of like this weird loophole. That's what I really look for. It's a weird loophole that not many people know about. And again, if if you didn't know about the cost error and how it works and how it works prior and after, like this becomes really weird and really, really tough. And you would get kind of like confused with how it would work. Um, and again, I go back to then Steel Fist. If you didn't understand there was an errata on it, you'd be even more confused because you like, well, certainly I can never do the beginning of this card because I can't stun and confuse a stalwart enemy, but they have since changed the card to the word too. This, this in here lies the confusion, I think, for most people. So I know that was a very roundabout thing. Deal and take has always bothered me. The cost arrow always made sense in the beginning, and they just kind of kept adding more rules to it. It's kind of wonky now. I mean, it still makes sense like 99% of the time, but there's some weird things to it. Um, but anyway, people get into their different other things. 
Um, and they talk about the duplicating blob thing. I've that actually, it's interesting read. If you, if you find this link and, and do it, check, check it out. Like I still don't fully understand that ruling, but it's kind of weird. Um, but there are a bunch of published rulings. There's a lot of times that I think they rule on one specific instance and then people apply it to things that it shouldn't be applied to. I think that's a part of the problem too, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just, it can get kind of crazy with the rules. And the reason I bring all this up is because I want to know um, what are some of your rules issues that you're having? And, and it doesn't have to be anything super complicated, right? It can be something very, very basic. Put it in the comments of this video, right? I will go through and answer all of them. Uh, or I will find someone who knows the answer and answer them, right? Uh, very fortunately, uh, if you're not a part of the Living Card Game LCG or my, or I'm sorry, the Living Card Game Discord channel or my Discord, uh, we we are more than happy to answer all rules questions you may have. We never make you feel bad about it for asking like the, no rule is, is whatever. I mean, I had people in chat last night that didn't know that when the enemy deck ran out uh, that you do not get an extra bad card that an acceleration token goes on, right? Like even stuff like that can be like kind of just trip people up and whatnot. So anyway, the whole reason I went through this whole post is that I want to stay like I feel for these people because a lot of people are just like, yeah, some of this stuff is really tough and I feel kind of weird like playing the rules wrong because like do you ever feel like you ever have like a true win and whatnot? And as a content creator, I, I really feel like this because people will point out my videos like, oh, you made a rules error there. And yeah, I'm going to make rules errors and it happens. And I don't get mad when people point out the errors. If you find an error, point it out because I want my videos to be a learning tool for people. And I think it's important for people to be able to read the comments after the fact and go, oh, that was wrong. Let me go see why it's wrong and why did D20 think of it like that way? Because maybe I would think of it that way, you know, if, if that makes sense. But anyway, long story short, I see a lot of rules questions on these message boards and stuff. I see a lot of rules questions I put uh, places and I see a lot of people that are like are afraid to ask questions that they will message me privately to ask a question, which is totally cool. You're, you're totally allowed to do that, uh, but don't feel bad. They are complicated. There's 56 pages of rules at the point in Marvel Champions that you have to go search out online. If you just went to Hall of Heroes and looked at all the past rulings, there's a ton of them. I mean, there is a ton of rulings and there's still more and more rulings each and every day. Do not feel bad about making rules mistakes. We all do it. I do it constantly. It's a part of the game. Even if you win and you think you might have made a small rules mistake, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Don't stress about it. But seriously, if you have a rules question, put it down in the comments. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Or I'm sure somebody else that knows the rules well that watches these videos, feel free to comment them on, uh, comment on them as well to help out a uh, fellow Marvel Champions player. Nebula, not as hard as I thought. All this from a true solo perspective, best perspective, <laughs> from comments on here and elsewhere in the community, I was expecting Nebula to be a tough encounter. However, I'm finding her to be quite easy, especially using stuns and confuses. I played her with Colossus Protection and Gamora Expert, uh, or I'm sorry, Gamora Justice. I don't know why I just said expert. That was very random, but whatever. Both times I felt like I, uh, she could either be rushed or I could manage threat easily. I would stun and confuse her without much problems. Her deck seemed uh, quite big to encounter sets in the standards, so that the technique cards were quite diluted. I understand she'd be very swingy, but there are also obvious rules that make it easy. Uh, there might be some obvious rules to make it overlook and the vulnerable to rush strategy. So here's the thing. Almost every villain is vulnerable to a rush strategy in true solo. Uh, except for like Magneto. Um, I think almost all of that. Yeah, I think almost all of them. Uh, may maybe not next evolution. Um, I'm thinking Strife might not be able to because you have to like throw a lot with him too. But generally speaking, uh, Rush Strategy is very, very strong. It's very, very strong. It's a very, very high win rate in general. And if you want to play just that way, that's totally cool. Nebula, in my experience to this day, and uh, let me also rephrase this too. Stunning and confusing constantly is incredibly strong in this game uh, for true solo. For, for multiplayer, it's not as strong. It's not bad by any means, but it's not, it's not as strong as it is true solo. This is why uh, they did a lot of stalwart villains starting with Mad Titan Shadow. Um, even in the X-Men stuff, they did stalwart a lot and they did steady to kind of help slow things down for true solo because true solo players were just spamming it for the first like two or three cycles and just getting like easy wins right it is an incredibly strong strategy so here's what i'll say about nebula if you play in my opinion if you play 12 games in nebula you will probably have around six ish games that are some of the easiest games you've ever played right absorbing man would seem much more difficult than what nebula is then you will also have six games where you will think Ronin is a cakewalk compared to, to Nebula. This is how I found her, that she can be just a cascading avalanche of 
bad sometimes, right? Like when things go bad and the deck stacks the wrong way, it, it's it, almost impossible or it feels, I should say, almost impossible to win, right? It's really tough. Now, does this happen all the time? No, it doesn't. And there's times when you will play six times in a row and it's just really easy. And there are times I have played six times in a row where it's the most difficult villain in the game. It's really weird because so much of it depends on how her cards come out with the surges, right? So much depends on what the technique stacking is and how it's going to affect you. And yes, if you use a lot of um, stuns and confuses, you'll be good. If you play a rush strategy, you're going to be good because she doesn't really get the ability or doesn't have the ability to stack out her techniques as much. Now, expert, she's really tough or can be really tough. But I've also had expert games, which is kind of easy. So it's this weird thing she has going on. It's kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I I get where they're coming from when they say like it's not as bad as I thought it was. I totally get that. But I think if you keep playing her, you'll get to the point where you're just like, this is stupidly hard. A uh, question from a noob about upgrade cards, for example, for Iron Man. Uh, I'm really new to the game and I'm not sure how to use some of the upgrade cards. For instance, with Iron Man's upgrade that gives him plus six hit points, is this an addition to what he already has? Nine plus six equals 15. That is correct. Or is it only healing up to the max amount of nine? No, it's not a heal card. There are cards that will say like, like first aid, right? Heal your character X amount up to whatever it is. Also, let's say you have four different Iron Man upgrades on the table. Do you keep each... Do you keep them after each turn or do they get discarded when you use them? Uh, I can use the previously mentioned upgrade every round and heal myself six. No, again, you're not healing. And it will say uses on a card if you like, you can only use a certain amount of times or there'll be an action or whatever. But yes, upgrades stay on the table. Generally, you can use them over and over. Uh, I'm guessing I can't, but there isn't anything in the card specifically that says that after being used. Um, again, with, uh, with Iron Man, really quick. We can go look at Iron Man cards. Um, the big thing is the cost error on Iron Man, right? The majority of his things, like, for, ex for example, his helmet, uh, right? Is that exhaust the helmet, so you do the thing and remove one threat. It doesn't say to discard the card, so you have to discard the card, right? Everyone's favorite saying, do what the card says, don't do what the card doesn't say. Uh, did I say that right? I think I did. Oh, the internet's going to make fun of me later if I didn't. <laughs> um, but, you know, exhaust power gauntlets, deal one damage, two damage of your aerial trait, right? Do what the card says. So... Uh, yeah, it doesn't go away again, unless it has the word uses on it. That's the one time it would. Another thing I've played with two, three and four players against Rhino with the standard decks and Iron Man seems to be incredibly weak. Am I just using him wrong? I hardly have any tech cards down, which means Iron Man's hands very small. You have answered your own question. Uh, he needs tech upgrades out as fast as possible. Generally speaking, a really good strategy uh, in Marvel Champions is getting all the cards, right? You want as many cards as humanly possible, uh, either through card draw or hand size or whatever it may be. More cards let you do more things. Doing more things is better than doing less things. I know that sounds like a really weird oversimplification. It might sound like crude and like whatever, but that is basically what Marvel Champions like boils down to like most of the time is get more cards to do more things. If you do more things, you will do better unless you do really poor things. But yeah, generally speaking, uh, that's what you have to do. So anyway, basic questions. I get it. Totally get it. Um, but yeah, and if it says it's adding on to his hit point, what does it actually say? Um, what is, What is that? I keep saying like acting like I know what it is. and I don't remember the wording on it uh not arc reactor the armor yeah you get plus six hit points so i can get why it's like oh you get to like heal no, no, no you like you add six to your life no love for aggression maybe it's me but it feels like aggression is people's least favorite aspect every list i see it's never anybody's favorite and most of the time it's everyone's least favorite most of the content creators i see rank it last bro are you not watching d20 woodworking come on <laughs> Last time I checked, the way to win the game is damage, and aggression does it best. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's, that is a very valid point. <laughs> I guess in solo games, I can see Justice Leadership being a little more popular, but in multi hand or multiplayer, which is all I play, I would think aggression should be up there, especially since the villain has much more health. Am I the one of the few who has aggression as the best aspect? So I don't have aggression as the best aspect per se, uh, but I do think it's, it, it's my number two, right? Justice is probably still my number one. It's also the, like... <sighs> It's the one I'm most, most comfortable with. Like, I know Justice inside and out now at this point because I've played so much of it. And obviously, in the beginning of the game, a lot of solo players had to lean on Justice because of, of the card pool and what cards could do and not do and all that fun stuff. Um, but I will say that Aggression is pretty awesome. Aggression has gotten pretty bonkers in what it can do, and I'm a big fan of it. And I agree. Like, there was there was a few comments down here. Um I forgot what it is. I, I don't remember where it is. I don't want to go searching for it. But one of the 
one of the people's arguments was that like, well, every single hero has big attack cards. So aggression isn't as needed as much because you need to do other things. And that is true to a point, but aggression does allow you to remove threat from a scheme nowadays uh, through uh, the one card that deals, what is it, five or six damage to a minion and then like the overkill damage and whatever, chase him down, I think is the other card, right? There are ways to remove threat with aggression. But the thing is, yes, every hero, generally speaking, has a giant attack card. It's usually two to three cards out of a 40 card deck. That's, in my experience, not enough, right? Like, if you're going to make a big push at the end, like, you got to line up everything correct, right? This is why, like, I think Angel clicks so well with me because he's just able to do so much damage, generally speaking, because Archangel, Archangel, um, is able to deal damage with whatever the the event cost is as well right so that he has other ways to do good amounts of damage if you look at like spider-man yeah swinging web kick is a three for eight damage card which is like the basics of marvel champions at this point three for eight but he's got what two three of them and if you don't have any more attack cards like what are you doing like he doesn't have another major attack card so you kind of need to have cards that are a little more aggressive with spider-man so it's kind of this weird thing um where I get I get the argument for it, but I do think attack cards, and especially nowadays, like all the 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 uh, aspects have forms of attack cards in them that like people rely on and lean into. I think at least a little bit, um, and plus the allies are so strong now. But what I will say is justice is probably my favorite aspect. Justice, then aggression, then protection, then leadership, then basic. Then I would rather not play the game. And then the pool aspect is, is probably my order of things. Deck thinning by putting cards in play. Last night while working on my second scenario, I played several games of the, the same deck that Dale the Casual Gamer posted in his how-to videos. So currently playing She-Hulk aggro and Black Panther protection versus Rhino. Uh, right before I lost, I seemed to hit a major, major power spike with Black Panther. I had three allies out, Helicarrier, Mansion, Golden City, a defense upgrade, and all four of his upgrades. Suddenly, it seemed to me it was impossible to not have multiple Wakandas forever in my hand. This was approaching the end of the second run through the deck. This is a good strategy to simply try to maximize the number of cards you have out on the table to get my deck to this condition, preventing scheme and healing and all that fun stuff. After reading today about some of the She-Hulk challenges, superhuman legal team working even when confused and especially her superhuman strength, not describing if there's nobody's done. Hey, we talked about that earlier. Making her a Killmonger destruction specialist if he comes out. I'm very excited to get back to the game tonight. Uh, yeah, deck thinning can be really good um, as long as you're controlling the board state, right? That's the big thing. And most likely if you have enough upgrades out that are doing enough things, like you're controlling the board state. Uh, the reason I bring this up is because cycling through and getting extra bad cards, depending on the villain, is a really bad thing, right? Like, I don't want an extra Ronin card out there because he surges so much, right? Now, an extra Thanos card might not be terrible. Extra Absorbing Man card means nothing, right? So you have to recognize who you're playing against. Uh, it kind of really matters on this. Uh, but if you are if you have a decent deck, you don't even have to have a great deck. If you have a decent deck out there and you are playing and you're just playing well right you so you have your your card draws draws out there you have any upgrades or supports that you know again let you play cards for cheaper or let you thwart for more or attack for more and then you're just playing your major events over and over and over then yeah that's going to be really strong like getting to your key events will be really strong uh over and over Web Warrior wo Woes. Uh, I was going to prep a Web Warrior deck and realized no Web Warrior allies in leadership or aggression because we have two Justice, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Spider-Ham, and two Protection, Ghost Spider, and Spider. Here I am dreaming of allies and aspects for Web Warrior decks. Which, like, I'll be honest, I never knew that. <laughs> I never knew that there wasn't, there wasn't them in there. Now, a couple people I think mentioned before that they want to see another Web Warrior cycle and i agree i do i do as well um, i hope they do it i don't know if they will but I, I really hope they do i think there's a lot there to to do the one thing is there is a lot of web warriors in basic right like a lot of basic web warriors i feel like they're also missing spider-man noir i think i just thought of that but anyway it doesn't really matter um there's a lot of basic web warrior cards out there and like peter parker spider-man basic is like stupidly strong um for web warriors so I, I wonder if it's kind of like a Guardians of the Galaxy situation where Guardians, like, there's no 
no real Guardians heroes in each aspect. They're all basic, right? And that's it because they want you to play as all the Guardians. And I don't know if like Web Warriors is supposed to be a play on that as well. Uh, but I do hope they come out with more Web Warrior stuff for sure. But it's kind of interesting. I never really realized that, that there was none in leadership. Well, I never really played leadership. But I didn't realize there was none in aggression. I thought there was. But I guess not. Question about upgrades. Still learning this game. Absolutely love it. Quick question that I can't get 100% answer on. If I have force field generated with an example of one energy counter left, can I put another force field generator into play and discard the one in play because of uh, it is max one per player? Or do I have to wait until one in play is used up and discard? Here's another rules thing because we've been talking about rules a lot tonight. Max and limit are two different things and a lot of people use them interchangeably generally speaking in marvel champions if a different word is used it means something different right it's it, it's very rarely are there interchangeable rule or interchangeable words in marvel champions so a lot of people are comparing this to um allies right because there's an ally limit of three so if you put in a fourth ally you have to kick one out basically and then you get back down to three when it's a max one per player, you can never put the second one in because you've gone over the max of one. Now, I know what you're thinking, right? Like, well, if there's a limit of something, why can I go over the limit and I have to go back to... I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why there's a difference there, but there is a difference there. Just understand that when there's max one per something, there can never be another version of it out there, right? If it's max one per player per you, max one per like deck, there can only be one in the deck, right? Just, Just... Try to understand that there's a difference between limits and maxes, and the max rule must always be like applied. Non-hero cards. I'm curious if when deck building, does the community typically put out only the minimum non-hero cards in their decks? All of my decks always include the minimum, with the exception of X23, where I Voltron Honey Badger, so I have a lot of extra cards. Uh, there may be another exception or two, but this is the most part, it's always the minimum. Generally speaking, your hero cards are your strongest cards very generally speaking. So you want to get those cards as much as possible. Now, I've seen people play, and I've done this too, where I may have a lot of upgrades and supports that I know are going to be hitting the table, and I'm going to thin out my deck a ton. And I don't, not that I don't want to thin it out, but I, I want it to be like a normal size. So I'll play 44, 46 card decks uh, if I have a lot of upgrades and supports, because there's a lot of things that synergize or work well with those upgrades and supports that aren't just the hero cards, right? That are other cards as well. So it kind of depends on it. Very generally speaking, I will use a deck that's a roughly around 40, right? 40, 40 hand size is, is generally what I use. There's a few times I've messed around 44 to 46. I've gone up to 50 a few times to see how 50 will work. It doesn't always work because again, I want to be playing my hero cards as much as possible. Pitch back and y'all enroll twice in a row. Hey, Forum, been switching around, but I don't see a specific answer to this. Is it possible to play two pitchbacks or two y'all enrolls twice in a row from a single basic action? Uh, the card doesn't state max one per basic action. The response window is not specific either. Response windows are weird. Uh, they are very, very weird. So I was looking at different cards. Um, so what was it? Um, oh my gosh, I already forgot. Uh, pitchback, right? Yeah, pitchback. So let's look at pitchback. So pitchback states that after your hero attacks, deal four damage to an, an enemy. Yeah, if you have two, like the response went okay. This response window for a card and a hero response is is generally open until you do a different action, right? And playing this uh, this event really isn't a different action. I think that's the right way to explain it. That might be a bad way to explain that I think about, it, but just that's how I understand it in my head. Um, y'all and roll? No, y'all, y'all, not y'all, y'all. And, and oh my gosh, today I tell you. So y'all roll, same exact thing after your hero Thor, it's removed through. Yeah. So both these cards, if you had, you know, three, three copies of pitchback, right? and you attacked, then yeah, you can play all three if you have the resources for it, sure. Because you're still working off of that response. One thing that will help you, I think, is, is Miss Marvel, uh, in my opinion, is that Miss Marvel like really helps expand response windows when you truly get to understand how she works. Um, so I think somebody even brings it up to, uh, yeah, Turn the Tide, for example, is another great card with this, where for those that don't know, in, in the in in the community and let me just because we did all this so we don't we don't need all those tabs open but turn the tie says after you hear a thwarts and removes all threat from a scheme deal three damage you could play this card multiple times right if you have two copies of this card you can play both copies of this card and the reason that this is important is because you have something like miss marvel the hero if you have miss marvel thwart 
and uh, take off the last threat. You can play Turn the Tide after you hear a thwarts and removes all threat from a scheme, deal through the damage damage. You could exhaust Miss Marvel to get this card back in your hand to play it again. It's a bonkers move, right? And a lot of people don't know that because response windows are kind of weird. Um, Fancy Flight Games has always had kind of like a weird thing with response windows. Not not a bad way. It's just like it, it takes a bit to learn them. Um, but I, but that's like a combination that a lot of new people to the game know or understand. So learn your response windows. They're in the rules. Uh, it is tough. Don't feel bad if you don't get it right away. But yes, after your hero does something, as long as you don't do a different thing, you'll be okay as long as you keep playing those response cards. Is this game possible to beat with just one deck? I know uh, the game is possible to play solo, but solo doesn't mean play with just one deck. I only have the base so far, but my question applies to the expansion as well. So I'm going to assume that they're talking about the one deck, right? The legendary one deck. And this really comes from Lord of the Rings, where in... C Stan uh, came up with this deck that was able to beat the entire game on nightmare difficulty using one deck. And it's a brilliant deck if you've never played, if you, if you played Lord of the Rings and you've never seen the deck, you should definitely uh, check it out because it's amazing. I, I did the whole game with it because I wanted to see if it worked and it does. It works really well. Um, so here's the thing with this. Is there a deck that could beat the entire game? Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, there's actually a lot of decks that could depending on how you define the entire game. And this is the one issue that that there is with the one deck. And don't get me wrong, I'm still on the quest to, to, to search the one deck and I have stipulations that I'll get into in a second with it. But if you're just trying to beat all the villains on standard, yeah, there's a lot that could do it actually. There's a lot of heroes and there's a lot of decks that can do it. If you're trying to do it all on expert, uh, that gets a little tougher, right? That's a, that's a little bit tougher. If you do on expert two, well, that's kind of actually really tough to do. There's only a few decks that could probably figure it out actually let me rephrase this there's probably only a few heroes that could probably do it if you start doing expert two with heroic or heroic standard difficulty one two three whatever it wants to be it kind of narrows down the field and this herein lies the problem technically technically the game has no end cap to the difficulty Right, so for Lord of the Rings, Nightmare was the highest difficulty. There, there was really no way to get higher in difficulty there. Marvel Champions, they've ruled that you could just keep adding on bad cards to basically make it a higher heroic difficulty. And I don't know if they actually have official rulings of what heroic is. Did he, did he even talk about it? Or is it just kind of like this wink and nod that we all like understand? Heroic mode. See, modes apply. Oh my gosh, okay. I wasn't really thinking that I had to go to another different thing. But modes apply 24. Um, I want to see if they actually like spell it out because i haven't checked what it is uh recently but heroic mo mode is a modification of standard mode that allows players to scale difficulty for the game to play the standard game uh to play a standard game modified by heroic mode before the game begins the ch players choose a heroic level number such as a heroic level one or four then for the remainder of the game during step three of the villain phase deal x additional encounter cards to each player where x is the uh chosen heroic level here's the problem there's no cap Right. So you could have her like you could say like, oh, well, the cap is heroic 10 or 20 or 50. Right. Is any deck ever going to do that? No, probably not. Uh, it, it just it just wouldn't work out. So that's the thing. It's it's kind of weird um, in that sense. So if you take expert two heroic one, right, is what I am now considering. it. And if expert three, if it does exist, I think it will because we have a standard three. So I assume there'll be an expert three. If standard or if expert three ends up being tougher, then my standard will be expert three heroic one. Is there anything that can do it? I'm still on the quest to try to figure that out. Um, but to answer the question, depends on how you define beat the game at the very highest level that I just like said uh, with heroic and standard two or heroic one on standard or expert two. Jeez, I can't even talk. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Strange and Scarlet Witch combo can probably do it individually strange probably might be able to do it spider hand might be able to probably do it for everyone else it's gonna start getting pretty tough chase them down card while confused card says response thwarts after your hero attacks and defeats an enemy remove two threat from a scheme i can't tell if this card can remove threat from a scheme that is confused or instead it removes the confused it doesn't say the hero removes two threat but i'm not sure the hero's response card uh, uh you know what's funny is i use this card all the time I can't even picture it. Um, okay, so, I mean, I can picture it. I just, I can't picture the wording. So, is response thwart? That's all you need to know right here is that it says thwart. If it says thwart, then if you are confused, the thwart action gets replaced by the confusion, right? So, you you will not be able to do the remove to threat part. You can't do this card at all. It would just get rid of the confusion. The reason I think people get tripped up with this 
is because we've done Scarlet Witch recently on stream. If you are confused and stunned, let's say, because why not? And you drew a zero, a zero, and a one, right? So you deal two damage to enemy, deal two damage to enemy, remove two threat. You can do all of that while being stunned and confused because you're not attacking and you're not thwarting. You're removing threat and you're dealing damage, but you're not attacking and you're not thwarting. More confusing rules, I know. But that's kind of like the weird thing that goes on is that you're not attacking. You're just dealing damage. And you're not thwarting, you're just removing threat. In order for a confusion to stop threat removal, you have to be doing the action of thwarting. In order for stunning to stop attacking, you have to actually be attacking. If it doesn't say attack or thwart on the card, kind of how this one does, especially in the parentheses here, then, then you're kind of golden. You could do it if you're suddenly confused. But if it says this Thor action, then you can't do the thing. You know what's funny? I kind of expected this to be a shorter video because I had less tabs open. But then once you get talking about rules, it just it, everything kind of goes to the wayside. and just end up talking about rules all day. And I want to go back to the very beginning of this. The rules are tough. Don't feel bad if you make rules mistakes. I, I'm seeing more and more. I think more people are getting into this game now, which is awesome, which is really, really cool. So I'm seeing more quote unquote basic rules questions. And not that there's anything wrong with that. Please ask your basic rules questions. But I'm also seeing some people getting like frustrated with it on Reddit or Facebook or BGG. And like, don't be frustrated with these people. Like we've had years to learn these rules and like know these interactions, like the backside of our hand, right? Um, but give people you know compassion like understand that people are still trying to figure out the game things that might really make sense to us like just doesn't make sense to the average person um so again i i, I open this up to anybody if you have any rules question please put it down in the comments I'm more than happy to help you out check out my discord make sure to check out nelson's discord right he's got a lot of and he's got a lot of good rules experts in that discord as well um if you would rather just message me privately because you don't you feel weird asking out loud yeah that's fine just just if you're sending me an email at d20woodworking at gmail.com just title it rules question so this way you don't get filtered by spam or something um or you just message me privately on discord that's totally cool like it's, you're not gonna bother me so i might not respond right away but you're not gonna uh, bother me about that so um this is just, again, a friendly reminder. This game can be really tough with rules. It can be really tough with rules. Do not let that bother you or stop you from playing this game. Once you get past some of the stuff, yes, as I outlined at the beginning, there are going to be some really weird nuanced rule stuff that probably you don't have to worry about. Just go have fun, right? Learn the basics, go have fun, and, and when you play the game, take your best guess. Take your best guess. And, you know, Hopefully you get it right. And then, you know, make a make a note down on your phone or something to ask this later on. Again, in one of the discords is probably the best place to do it nowadays uh, just because it's so rapid. Not that Reddit's bad or anything. Like I've, I've asked rules questions on Reddit, but just because Discord's like very, very quick. We try to respond pretty quick to these things. Um, so yeah, we're always here to help. Never feel bad for asking rules questions. And again, if you have any, put them down below. Um, and once again, I appreciate everyone that has subscribed to this channel. Honestly, that stuff really helps out. We're closing in on 4,000 subscribers, which is crazy to think about. Uh, so really, honestly, everyone that just hit that subscribe button, watches these videos, even if you never comment or anything else, like still, I appreciate you. Thank you very much for your support. It means a lot. And, uh, very last thing, if you haven't seen it, I came up with a new video, the state of D20 woodworking. It's right there. You can check it out. Uh, it's kind of interesting just talking about like, what the channel is doing what we're going to be doing in the future uh so give that video a uh, uh view if you don't mind and give it a like